Hello, and welcome to episode one of Hexagon Novatel's webinar series on an introduction to GNSS. My name is James Chan. I'm the North America team lead AMP core customer support at Novatel in Hexagon's autonomy and positioning division. Thank you for joining me. This is the first of seven presentations designed to introduce you to GNSS basics. This presentation will explain the underlying math that happens when using satellites to determine your position in the world. The webinar series will explore what happens to the signal as it leaves the satellite and goes through the atmosphere to user equipment and across industry. The series builds off our existing expertise in the industry as literally writing the book on GNSS. If you're ready to dig deeper into these concepts, then check out our introduction to GNSS book at Novatel.com. So, to determine your location, this is the basic equation you need. Speed equals distance divided by time. When using this formula, we're solving for distance. There are some aspects of the equation we know. Speed is always going to be the speed of light. That's how quickly a signal is sent from a satellite. The time is how long it took for the signal to reach the receiver. We calculate this based on the receiver's timestamp when it receives the signal, minus the satellite's broadcast timestamp. Once we have these pieces, we can solve for our distance from the satellite. The calculation assumes the speed of light, but once signals reach our atmosphere, that speed isn't completely accurate. So we call the calculated distance a pseudo range. It's our estimated range, and we have other calculations to do to increase the equation's accuracy. As we track more satellites, more spheres of where we could be are established. Our position is where all the spheres intersect at a common point. As a note, it takes at least four spheres to intersect at one common point. Just hard to visualize that on our two-dimensional slide here. This is the process of how we take that equation, determine our pseudo range to satellites, and apply it in finding our position. But first, let's dig deeper. Let's look at the infrastructure that the satellite signal goes through. We've been talking about the space segment so far. At its basics, the satellites are managed by control stations. The control segment helps maintain the accuracy of a satellite's position and timing, and provides an element of quality control to the signal. The satellite signal travels to the user segment. This segment includes equipment that processes the received signals and calculates your position. These segments form the whole infrastructure that supports satellite positioning. Within the infrastructure are pieces of technology that handle the processing of your position. Let's follow the satellite signal through each piece of technology. From the GNSS satellite, the signal travels through our atmosphere to GNSS antennas. During its journey, the signal may have weakened or degraded, and antennas help amplify these weaker signals during reception. Next, the signal travels to our receivers. This is where the calculations are done to determine your position. Further calculations can also occur that counteract the signal's degradation. Once the receiver has run the numbers and equations, it provides positioning data to user equipment working in the field. The signal is used in autonomous vehicles, precision agriculture, defense applications, and even in the average person's cell phone. An alternative way to consider the signal's journey is through these steps, from satellites to propagation or broadcast or a signal, to reception, computation, and application. This webinar series will further expand on each of these stages, including the factors weakening or degrading signals, the equations used to supplement degraded signals, and more. But before we get too complicated, the underlying principle of speed equals distance over time remains the same. GNSS infrastructure and user equipment build upon this basic equation. At its most basic level, user equipment includes antennas to better receive signals, and receivers to better calculate your position. These technologies can come by themselves, like our receiver boards here, and can be combined in different ways to further finesse calculations. There are also services, software, and firmware provided that facilitate better processing of signals and of the positioning data collected. Thanks for joining me for episode one of our introduction to GNSS webinar series. I've introduced you to the underlying equation 
to determining GNSS positioning and to the general infrastructure that supports these calculations. Our next video will share what happens to the satellite signal when it leaves the satellite, the factors that contribute to positioning errors, signal degradation, and more. But if you're ready to get a head start in learning these GNSS concepts, you can download our in-depth book, An Introduction to GNSS, on our website. Thanks for joining me for episode one of our series.